PanicAttackRecovery.com. Hi, I'm Lynette from PanicAttackRecovery.com. We're a collaboration of former sufferers helping people with panic attacks, anxiety, stress, and ADHD. However, our material can be helpful to anyone interested in taking care of their mental health. Last week, we completed a cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, technique on an example of challenging thoughts that was submitted by a subscriber to our newsletter. If you recall, we carried out the process by first identifying the cognitive distortions in this person's thoughts and then completing something called cost-benefit analysis. Finally, we ended by presenting alternative and more accurate thoughts using the example provided in by this individual. Today, we want to build on this process by discussing two more types of cognitive distortions. The first one is called should statements. When situations arise that upset you, you're likely making should statements. Should statements are concentrating on what you think should or ought to be rather than the actual situation you're faced with. Or having rigid rules which you think should always apply no matter what the circumstances are. Often when we make should statements, we begin to reflect on a negative situation and make the suggestion worse in our minds. This process of making it worse is actually another cognitive distortion called magnification. Magnification refers to inappropriately exaggerating the way people or situations truly are. Dr. John M. Grohl, a doctor of psychology, provides some very useful information in his article on cognitive distortions. What really piqued our interest was his discussion of the fallacy of fairness. Dr. Grohl states, we feel resentful because we think we know what is fair, but other people won't agree with us. As our parents tell us, life is always fair, and people who go through life applying a measuring ruler against every situation, judging its fairness, will often feel badly and negative because of it. The fallacy of fairness explains very clearly how each of us has our own should rules with which we think the world should conform. The problem is that this is simply not how the real world always works. But there's no need to despair because one can learn to work with their thinking on this matter. Once again, we'd like to share the process of cognitive therapy by working through, in detail, an example of thoughts that contain the cognitive distortions we discussed today. Then, we'll apply to the example the cost-benefit analysis. It can be useful to see more examples of this process, and this will help you to apply it to your own thoughts as well. Since the process itself can be a little tedious to always present in video format, we've laid out the complete process on our website so that you can review it at your own pace. If you'd like to access this article, please visit our website where you can also subscribe to our free newsletter. Thank you for watching and we look forward to presenting another video next week. Take care. PanicAttackRecovery.com